Welcome to my beginning watercolor tip number two, controlling the water bead and painting with gravity. In this video, I'm going to discuss the importance of controlling the flow of water on your work surface and the role that gravity plays in that. To do this, I'm going to walk through some very simple exercises to illustrate the concept. Before I start with the exercises, I want to point a few things out about the proper positioning of your work surface when you're working in transparent watercolor. When you're working in most mediums, such as oil, acrylics, gouache, pencil, you can work at just about any angle and it doesn't affect the behavior of the paint. That's not true with watercolor. To work properly with transparent watercolor, you have to be able to control the bead of water which means you're going to rely on gravity. If you try to work with transparent watercolor on a flat surface, it simply won't work. You'll have no control of your wash and won't be able to control where your paint's going. When I'm working with transparent watercolors, I generally work with a 15 to 20 degree incline. And I think this is a common range for most people. However, there are times when you might want a 30% or even a 90% uh, depending on what you're trying to achieve with your paint. But most often you don't want anything that steep and you don't want anything flat. It's very difficult to accomplish anything when you're working on a flat surface with transparent watercolor. You can see in the photo I have my work surface at about a 20% incline probably. This is a full sheet of watercolor so this is a very large piece that I'm working on that this is set up for. Um, it's not quite, doesn't look quite as steep when I'm working on a smaller board, but I have a wedge that I use that I picked up in an office supply store, and I slide that in and out depending on the, the uh, board that I'm using the paint on. It gives me a very flexible setup. I can work with different size um, sheets of paper, and I can work at different inclines uh, to achieve uh, a slight incline or a greater incline. If I really want a steep incline, then I put it on an easel and adjust it to the angle that I want. As with anything, I feel the best thing to do is experiment and find out what works best for you. I've divided a quarter sheet of watercolor paper into six blocks and I'm just going to walk through six basic exercises illustrating the concept of painting with gravity and controlling a watercolor bead. In this first exercise, I'm working wet on dry and I'm going to illustrate how the flow of the paint with the assistance of gravity will follow the path of least resistance. If you're familiar with electricity, electricity follows the path of a, a least resistance and your watercolor will do the same thing. It's going to look for the path that's already um, been established by wet paper. When I apply the paint I'm creating a path that the the water above it is going to flow to because of gravity. So as I put more and more water in this you can see it just trickles down through the path that's been established by the wet paper and it's going to gather in a bead form at the bottom of the, the path. And if I've established a proper angle to paint with that bead is going to hold its position until I decide to move it forward. If you get it too steep of an angle, that bead is going to break loose and just roll uncontrolled down your paper. But working at, say, a 15 to 20 percent incline, that's not going to happen. That bead is going to hold tight until you're ready to move the paint further. And you can see, as I apply a different color in here, you can see it. It's just following the path of the paper. It's going over the wet paper. It's going around the shapes, and you have control of what's going on there. If this was a flat work surface and you were applying this paint, you wouldn't get the effect of gravity here and the impact of it. It would just float on the surface and go in any direction that there was a regularity to follow. So this is why working at a proper incline with your, with your work surface and using gravity to your advantage, you're in control of the medium. You're controlling that bead of water, which is very important when you're trying to do a, a, a complete painting. So I'm applying more paint here and I'm 
going to apply some of this very close to one another, some of these uh, arteries that I'm creating with the flow of this paint. And um, you'll see that you can you can get these the flow of the paint that's created by leading that bead of water very close to, to each other and have just a very thin white line showing. And it's going to stay that way because, again, the paint is going to follow the path of least resistance. So as I get closer on some of these edges, I'm still able to maintain a very clean uh, white line with pure white of the paper. Look how close and how thin that line is. But those two, the, the paint, is the, the blue and the red color aren't coming together because the paints fall on the path of uh, least resistance with the assistance of gravity. And I've got the right angle, so that's not going to bleed together. I'm in control of what's going on with this paint. Now, when I'm working like this and I'm working on a painting, I'll get to a point here such as this, and I turn on my hair dryer and I dry my paint, and then I start building up more layers of washes. But I've been in control of where this water is going, the, the paint, the whole time. So this next exercise, my objective is simply to put on a flat wash. So I've mixed enough paint in my palette of a, one color to give me a consistent tone that I'm going to be able to paint this entire uh, space with around the shapes and keep it the same color. So I've pre-mixed enough. So you can see what I've started to do is I've applied paint across the top of the paper and now I'm starting to load that bead up with water. I'm going to just gradually control the flow of that paint down the page. So this is at a 15-20 degree incline and I've got my bead of water that I'm leading down the page and that bead of water is going to stay where I leave it until I come and move it further down the page. And it's important as I do this that I do maintain a bead of water because if I don't have a bead of water on that edge, I run the risk that that edge is going to start to dry before I come back to apply more paint. And if I do, that dried edge is going to show up in my wash. I'm not going to have a nice even tone. So as I leave this wash down the page, you can see from the left side, the middle, and the right, I'm maintaining a bead of water on the edge so that I don't get backwash and I don't get premature drying of the edge, which would make this a uh, create texture in my wash instead of giving me a nice even flat tone coming down the page. So with the aid of gravity and the bead of water, I'm able to lead this uh, this puddle of, of one tone down the page and be able to get a very even wash application to my work surface. And you can see by coming around the shapes with this bead of water, it leaves me a clean edge that the paint doesn't bleed off into because I'm working wet on dry. I'm working with gravity and the bead of water and I'm in control of this wash and where it's going. And because I've mixed enough in my palette, um, all I'm doing is loading the same tone, the same value on my brush and load, loading the bead and taking it down the page. And you can see, I've got a nice even tone. So for this third exercise, my objective is still to put an even tone on the paper but I'm going to take a, uh, a different approach. I'm not going to worry so much about the bead and I'm going to paint this kind of like you would if you were painting a room in your house. You know, when you cut the edges in around the windows and door frames and sockets, you, you paint an outline around uh, the room and then you come back and you fill it in. So that's the approach I'm going to take with this exercise is I'm going to cut in the paint around the shapes, around the outside of the um, block and then I'm going to come and fill it in. So my objective here is still to get a nice even tone like the second exercise. But you can see I'm not leading a bead of water around. My paint, my brush is wet with tone, but I'm just trying to fill the space. Even though I have gravity, I don't have the bead. 
So I'm just going around cutting in the edges of the objects and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to fill in in between the areas that I've uh, the edges that I've painted. What isn't obvious right now is I've been working my way around the shapes and the edges in this block. What's occurring are, are the edges that I've already painted have begun to dry. They don't have a bead of water on them, keeping them uh, moist and ready to continue the wash. They started to dry. So when I come back in to start filling this up, the the space in between where I've outlined, you're going to start to see a different result than what happened when I just led one bead down the page and did the whole wash all together. You can see because some of those areas have dried, now I'm getting overlap when I start to paint in between. And in essence, I have uh, two layers of wash there now instead of one. And then some areas which are partially wet or partially dry. I start to get some backwash in. So you can see where I'm not going to get the same even tone, an even wash down this entire surface because of the, uh, the approach that I've taken. I haven't been using uh, the bead of water. Uh, I'm using gravity, I guess, to, to, to fill it. It still flows a little bit, but I'm not leading that bead of water. And now you can see that I've got. Um, hard edges showing up in my wash and some blossoming going on and I, I'm not in control of what's going on with that wash. So now that they're dry and you take a good look at them side by side you can see the difference. The first example there I have a nice even tone over the whole surface and the second one I've got blossoms and backwash and hard edges because of the, the different approach I took to fill that space with paint. In this fourth exercise, my objective is to use the bead of water and gravity to apply a gradated wash this time. So I'm beginning as I did in the second exercise where I'm loading up uh, plenty of tone that I have from my palette. But instead of continuing to load it up with that same value tone, I'm going to start mixing water into my paint and I'm going to start to lighten the mixture that I'm le uh, loading into this bead. So now I'm leading this bead down the page as I did before, but instead of charging that bead with a consistent uh, mix of color that I did before, now I'm starting to add more and more water to the bead and you can start to see that the value is starting to lighten. So um, as I continue this down the page, I'm getting to a point where all I'm doing is loading water into the bead. And you can see now I have a nice gradation of a darker to a lighter value. So here I'm using the bead of water and gravity to get a nice consistent wash, but it's a gradated wash. So I've done it as I did before. I led the bead of water down, but I charged that bead with diluted paint and water. Now in this fifth exercise, we're going to start off the same. We're going to put a gradated wash in this block, but instead of gradating just the value, we're going to gradate the color. So before I used a, the same tone and took it all the way down the page and got an even wash. Then I started adding water and I got a gradated wash or the value light and so I went from dark to light. Now I'm adding different colors to the bead and so I get a gradation of color as I come down the page. So the same principles are working here, the gravity, the bead of water, but what's changing is that I'm putting different tones into my bead and by doing this you get a nice transition and mingling of the paint. And you can start to, this is a good way to charge a wash as you bring it down the page. You may have a flat wash, but you want to 
charge it with a little bit of different color and this is a good way to do it but again this is a bead of water being led by my brush and gravity so I'm in control and I'm in control of what's going into the wash but it's it's the same concept so for this last exercise I'm going to take what I did in the previous exercises and combined it. So I'm starting with my wash but now what I want to do is achieve a gradation of color and value. So as long as I keep this wet and have this bead I can position some of the same tone across this uh, space because it's small enough and I can work fast enough that I can bring in some other colors before it dries. So now I'm bringing in different tones, different values, and I'm letting these beads mingle as it comes down the paper. Again, still gravity, but what I have going on now is I have gradation of value, gradation of color, all happening at the same time. But it's, it's the same thing that I did in each one of those steps. And, and now you can see how you can apply this when working in a painting you have very varied uh, washes, you can have varied values, gradated values, um, and this could be a sky, or this could be water, or this could be in a tree, or it could be on an object, but um, it's the same principle. It's leading that bead of water on your page with gravity, and then you're in control, and it, it's going to go where you want, and it's going to go with whatever you load that bead of water with. And the best part about this process is it looks like watercolor. It's what watercolor is supposed to be. That's why you work with transparent watercolor to get effects like this. So here I've done six simple exercises to illustrate the concept of leading the bead of water and painting with gravity. So I hope you've learned from this and enjoyed this, and I hope you'll try some of these on your own. Here I have a couple examples where I've taken two colors and I've led the bead down the page and let the colors mingle together, just playing around with color. And you can see the nice effect that you can get when you're working this way. Now, as I close this video out, I'm going to show a few examples. And as you see these, think about leading that bead down the paper and using gravity and controlling washes and getting that gradation of value and color and how that process was used and that concept was used to uh, execute these paintings. So that's my video. I hope you've got a better understanding of the importance of leading the bead of water around your page and staying in control. And hopefully you have a better understanding of the role gravity plays in transparent watercolor. I hope you've enjoyed this and thanks for watching.